Hi everyone. It's just dawned on me. I could do a video now. I just got the babies fed. They're midday feeding. We cleaned up the playpen again. And there are bouncing all over the place, just playing and having a good time. I gave them all their vaccine, their six week vaccine this morning. And they took them like a champ. Everybody did great and they're doing great. And uh, <clears throat> we're working on a new round of the uh, worm medicine. This one will be for a three day, uh, three day treatment. It's just for precautions to flush their systems of any potential uh, chance of parasites. So. We use Fembendazole, and uh, they'll take it for three days, the next three days, and then they're pretty much done until next week when they're seven weeks old. They'll get a uh, dose of heartworm, the uh, Advantage 1 heartworm medication, and it's a topical that goes on the back of the neck, and I like it because I can give it to seven-week-old puppies, and that just helps to make sure... There's no parasites, get them already started on their heartworm uh, program, prevention program before they leave me. So it's easy for uh, new families to just uh, continue follow up the next, the next time it's due every month. I use it on all my adults and I give it to my babies at seven weeks old. And we have good results with it. We don't have any kind of worms or heartworms. Or, um, I don't have any problem with ticks or fleas. The vet told me that Advantage 1, Advantage Multi, it's, it claims to take care of everything, including ticks and fleas. But the vet said it works great on the internal parasites, but not so great on the external. But like I said, I still have no issue with fleas or ticks, which I rarely had any issue. Uh, once in a great, great while, every few years, my husband might pick up a tick. And once, it's been, it's been several years since I've seen a flea on any of my dogs. And I haven't seen any signs of that since I started using the Advantage Multi either, so. So I guess it just depends on location and what you're dealing with and if they've built up some kind of a, uh, resistance, I don't know. But for us, Advantage Multi is working great. And puppies are making a mess. I can't get a wipe out very easy, but um, they do like to do that when I'm doing a video and I have to clean it just to keep them out of it. Okay, kids. Okay, kids. Enough of that. Yeah, you need to settle down there, Mr. Arrow. Oh, Mr. Desi. Who else is here? Denny and Devin. That's Devin. Denny laying right here and Danny. And then Bo. Who's that? That looks like Reagan, the solid black and white. Reba, my little keeper. Arrow, <laughs> Arrow and Dizzy. Now that's the giant and the lamb right there. <laughs> Dizzy's the smallest one in our three litters and Arrow's the largest one. Arrow's coming in at five pounds and Dizzy is, he's just under two. No, he's actually almost two and a half pounds. That's right. So uh, the rest of them are in between those two sizes. But Arrow is our biggest one so far. And Denny is getting right there with him. And Devin. Denny and Devin. And then Danny. And everybody else is <laughs> quite a bit smaller. Even Bo is a bit smaller than Denny, Danny, and Devin. They're all just a little bit on the bigger side. But the others will, will catch up. And the bigger ones will slow down. They all go through growth spurts at, at different stages. So, sorry, I don't like cleaning up their potty during a video, but 
at this point they are pottying constantly so <laughs> anytime i got the camera somebody's gonna be pottying there's um ryan ryan is a good looking boy with a full collar and blaze and the brindle color i won't spotlight him while he's busy but i still have nine boys available and i really would like to see them start getting adopted um, several have been taken but we have that is who are you reagan and patch are the two pretty much solid black and white standard markings patch has a little white spot and then I have Ryan, and we have Radar, and Ry we do have Riley, but Riley is more black and white, and he's down under here. Riley has a Haggerty dot, but he's more black and white. That's Daisy Deuce. Look at you, cutie bug. Oh, and you little cutie bug. Oh, my goodness. Yes, you're a cutie bug, Desi. Where's that Maggie girl? Maggie's right down in here. Whoops, I'm so sorry, Ryan. I'm so sorry, I toppled you over. There's our Maggie girl. And Luna. And we got Radar. Where's Petey? Petey, you're right here. Hi, kid. Say hi to your dad. Say hi, dad. See you soon. Going to see you soon. Oh, <laughs> Uh, I was tickled to see comments from somebody in Singapore this morning. Uh, I know that it is possible to transport a dog anywhere in the world. People do it all the time. I don't know how expensive it is, and I don't know the uh, regulations, uh, you know, in some places like China. <laughs> so uh, if you are interested in... And, uh, I know it, they can fly as in a, they can fly in the cabin in a pet carrier under the passenger seat. So I do know that most all the airlines have some kind of standard regulations for how to do it. So you have to check with your individual airlines. But I do also know that some countries, even Hawaii had some pretty serious restrictions that had to be met, like the puppy had to have all its vaccines, which means it has to be four months old. But then Alaska and Canada, I, I sent puppies to those areas and there was no issue whatsoever. They went as an eight week old puppy and no problem. Well, the girl I sent to Alaska was six months old, but she didn't have to be. She could have went at eight weeks old like, like anywhere else. And, but Hawaii has some serious restrictions. They want all the vaccines completely caught up. And if you don't do it before you get there, they will hold them in their customs area or, or whatever for pets until they're old enough to have all their vaccines before they'll release them. So different places or different regulations. Um, but I do know People, people bring, especially Boston Terriers, in from Europe all the time, or they go to Europe. Who's crying over here? Desi, quit biting his ear. You bite his ear when he's sleeping. That's mean. Reba, you're such a good girl. You're, oh, you're such a good girl. They're all such good babies. And they're finally settling down now. So that's our update. We have nine boys available. They're AKC registered. Moms and dads are DNA health tested for uh, the four most common uh, genetical uh, defects for Boston Terriers. All my adults are clear. I don't breed into defective genes. So we like to test and make sure nobody's carrying something to pass on and um, they'll be ready to go October the 18th. And I'm working on getting uh, schedules for everybody that's already scheduled to pick up their babies. I like to try to help with, if I can, 
I can get away from the house usually for about two hours, which turns into a four hour one round trip. So I can drive about two hours to meet and uh, two hours away from my house, which that includes the Tulsa International Airport. If anybody is looking to fly one home and then uh, I try to get everybody on a schedule. So most people will come to my home to pick them up and uh, which works best for me because then I don't have to leave whichever ones are still here but but I try to work it all out in advance so that we all know uh, and can do it easily keep the stress down on the babies is the main thing and help everybody I know you know getting a puppy and some of these puppies are going one to Chicago one to uh, Michigan um, Arkansas and Oklahoma, where else? South Arkansas, I don't know, but we still have nine, so who knows? By the end of this, these litters, we'll have puppies all over the United States. And if you can get one into Singapore, I'd be happy to help with that. <laughs> uh, that would be pretty cool, so. But anyway, I'm going to let them sleep now, and I'm going to go over there and sit down and rest. Uh, feeding them and cleaning up after them kind of wears you down, doesn't it, Dad? Dad's doing a, a really good job helping. He gets up earlier than I do, and uh, he by the time I get up, he's usually got them fed, and the, the top surface is clean. I can drink some coffee, and then I can get into the, the lower surface and clean it, the whole thing up get the laundry going but uh, it's working out pretty well 16 puppies is is a quite a bit of mess to deal with so <laughs> help is appreciated but i am still hoping for a litter with candy in november i should get to start trying to do a ultrasound next week just to confirm pregnancy i say she's pregnant my husband says he doesn't see any change in her but We'll see. It takes an ultrasound to know for sure. So we'll do a couple of them next week and see if I can see anything there. And hopefully in praying that God will bless us with another litter in November. But these babies need to move on out and get to their new homes and families before that. Because I don't think I can handle another litter on top of these three. <laughs> Especially as they get bigger. Uh, when they're little tiny babies, it's not it's not any work at all. But when they get up, they're six weeks old yesterday. So from now to eight weeks, there are a lot of uh, cleanup, which we love to do. But it's time to break them up and let them get uh, situated and each one in their own new family and uh, start bonding with uh, the people they're going to live forever with. So this is... Get it at eight weeks old is the perfect age to do that because that's when they bond the deepest is while they're still on the, the the younger side the older they get you still bond but it's not quite the same kind of a bond anyway y'all have a good saturday and i know we'll be back sometime tomorrow probably after church so everybody get up and go to church tomorrow uh, God loves us, and we need to show him that we love him, too. And I'll be back tomorrow.